Hi, I'm Derek Latta. We're here to talk about hair restoration treatments. Joining us from our South Florida PBS studios in Palm Beach County is Dr. Alan Bauman, a board certified hair restoration physician, as well as CEO and medical director of Bauman Medical. How you doing, doctor? Welcome. I'm doing great, Derek. Great to be here with you. Great. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, doctor, I want to talk to you about your background. Tell us a little bit about your work and why your credentials are so unique. So uh, my background originally was in plastic surgery, but I got interested in hair by watching my dad go bald. And I was pretty uh, scared that it was going to happen to me. And eventually, when I learned about hair transplantation and hair restoration, I followed it as uh, my life's work. So it's been about 20-something years since I started in hair restoration. And I'm one of only 200 board-certified hair restoration physicians in the world. And to date, we've treated over 30,000 patients in my practice, Bauman Medical, located in Boca Raton, Pro oh, very Boca nice. Raton Florida. Yeah. A, very, a very young age, I must say. Very nice. Excellent. Well, I was born at a very young age. At least that's what my grandmother said. <laughs> okay. Um, so is it ever okay to see a dermatologist or plastic surgeon for hair restoration services? Well, you know what? I mean, today, hair restoration as well as hair transplant is a really a true subspecialty. So a dermatologist, your primary doctor, even a plastic surgeon may be able to help you with a diagnosis, but they may not necessarily be able to help you with the state-of-the-art treatments and procedures. So we always recommend finding a specialist if you have a hair loss problem. Specialists like yourself, obviously. Um, hair loss is a big problem. Can you put into perspective how many people will experience this in their life? And you can include oh, yeah. me if hey. you want. Yeah, uh, well, hair loss, uh, well, if it's including you, it's going to happen to 100% of people. But no, <laughs> in, in, the, in the U.S., there are probably over 80 million Americans who are struggling with a hair loss problem. And about 50% are men, 50% are women. And it can start right after puberty. So it's a, it's a big problem. People generally like their hair. They want to keep their hair. And especially for women, there's no socially acceptable alternative for hair loss. So hair restoration treatments and services are becoming more and more popular today because of the technologies and treatments that we have. Very nice. You, you mentioned that it could start after puberty. So at, at what point should you look into treatment? Well, gosh, you can lose up to 50% of your hair without it being noticeable to the naked eye. So we always suggest that as soon as you start to see or feel something happening, you should start to seek treatment, seek an evaluation. Some of the things that we do, for example, in the office in the early stages of hair loss is to measure your hair so that we know exactly what's happening over time. We can benchmark it, baseline it, and then track it. When you say measure, physically measure the length of the hair or measure, can you clarify that part of it? Yeah, so it's not really the length. What we want to measure is the density and the caliber of the hair. And we have special tools to do this today, scientific tools that enable us to really track what we call hair mass index. And that's, uh, that, that is the baseline measurement that we use uh, to track not only a diagnosis, like how much hair loss has already occurred mm -hmm. and where, but also your response to treatment. Okay. Um, does getting treated earlier improve the results? And if so, how come? Why? Well, absolutely. I mean, hair follicle isn't something that turns on and turns off. There's a lot of miniaturization, a lot of weakening effect that occurs before the follicle shuts down. So it's going to be really, really important to track the uh, miniaturization phase mm -hmm. of the hair follicle and then intervene as soon as possible before the hair is completely dead and gone. So uh, early intervention uh, is, is key in this case. Early intervention is a critical step, absolutely. Okay, so a lot of people are familiar with some over-the-counter brands. How do those work, and do they work? <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, an over the counter product like uh, over the counter minoxidil, like Rogaine and such, was actually identified as one of the most disappointing hair growth treatments ever by Consumer Reports. But the, the good news is that minoxidil can work. Uh, we use prescription versions, compounded versions like Formula 82M, which is going to be a lot more potent, a lot less greasy and gooey than the over the counter version. Um, but the downside is that you have to see a physician to get a prescription for that kind of medication. Uh, the other thing is, is that you've got over-the-counter and consumer-based laser light devices. Mm -hmm. Some of those, unfortunately, are a little bit weaker. You're not going to have as much coverage. A lot of what we do is prescribe in-office treatments as well as lasers that you could go home with. So like this, for example, this is a, a laser cap. I can turn it on for you. Mm -hmm. This is the latest and greatest laser that is helpful for hair regrowth. And this is a completely powerful, portable device that uh, 
enables you to treat your hair loss at home in a very, very comfortable way without side effects or downside. And this one in particular called the, la the Turbo Laser Cap packs completely flat. So if you travel a lot, you can do this treatment uh, when you're away from home. Turbo Laser Flat, does that, uh, does it get hot? Is it uncomfortable? Uh, it, it looks like it might be warm <laughs> to wear. Is that? No, not at all. No. Actually, this is designed to dissipate any heat whatsoever. And remember, low-level laser is a non-cutting, non-burning light source, so you're not going to feel any discomfort. You're not going to feel any warmth. You're not going to feel any heat. Okay. And there's no side effects to laser light therapy, which we've seen amazing hair regrowth results with this uh, for patients in the early stages of hair loss and those who want to maintain their hair. If someone's watching that has uh, less hair than they'd like, what do you suggest? Uh, what can they do? to maybe so minimize probably the, that. <laughs> yeah, the most important thing to do if you're seeing, seeing a, seat, a receding hairline or thinning in the crown area or you, you're seeing more shedding in the shower or on your pillow or in your brush or your ponytail is thinning, you've got to seek out expert help because this mm -hmm. is not something that's so easy to treat on your own. Um, you know, seek out a physician who can really diagnose the problem and put you on a treatment plan, get you the right tools, whether it be laser light therapy, topical medication, or prescription medication, or even some of the other interventions before you need something more invasive like hair transplants to get the job done. Doctor, uh, everything you've mentioned is super uh, informational and hopefully beneficial to a lot of people. We want to thank you for joining us on the show today and uh, hope to see you again. Well, well it's, tru it's truly my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.